Hi everyone, I'm Jeeth, The Healer and Method. Today I'm talking everything we know about the corruption loot system in 8.3, and whether it really is good, or if it's the worst thing since, I don't know, Titanforging? First, for those more visual learners out there, I highly recommend Wowhead's Corruption System Overview. They've put together a very thorough article about the corruption system explaining how just about everything works currently on the PTR. For a long time, World of Warcraft has had systems whereby loot can randomly drop better than baseline loot otherwise would have. Thunderforged, Warforged, Titanforged, the names have changed over the years, but it's a pretty straightforward system. An item of loot can drop with varying amounts of extra item level, for free, with no downside. Currently, for example, the Titan Forging cap is 455, but any piece of loot from any of the raids or any other source in BFA can Titan Forge, gaining 5, 10, 15, 20, however many item levels necessary to reach that cap. For example, my warlock, Jaraxxus. He got a trinket drop from a Najatar world boss. Those world bosses drop 415 item level loot baseline, but because my warlock is lucky, it Titan Forged 40 item levels from 415 to 455. That's like having a piece drop from Mythic Jaina, but instead of being 415 like Mythic Jaina loot, it just randomly drops 10 item levels better than gear that can be obtained from an entire tier later Mythic Ashar loot that drops at 445. Now this video isn't about Titan Forging, so long story short, really not a fan of this system. Simply put, Corruption in 8.3 is the new system for how loot can upgrade, and it's a pretty huge change from the historical system. Instead of just gaining item level, a piece of loot that drops can gain a variety of new effects, and for the first time, an improved drop comes with a downside. That downside is really important for why I believe the new system is an upgrade over the previous Titanforging system. First, let's talk about the various upsides that you can gain from an improved piece of loot in the 8.3 corruption system. The positive effect can be one of any number of varying effects. For example, you may gain additional healing received, or additional leech, or additional damage that you deal with critical strikes. You may get an effect that reduces the damage that you take from periodic effects or increases your health regeneration during combat. You may get an effect that increases your avoidance by an amount proportional to one of your stats or simply gives you more secondary stats. For example, one corruption effect just increases how much haste you gain from all sources, or mastery, or crit, or versatility. There's also an interesting new effect called Flash of Clarity. If a piece of loot drops for you with this corruption effect, your abilities will have a chance to give you a proc that will reduce the cooldown of the next spells you cast. It's easy to see that this loot system already has a significant amount of RNG. Not only do you need to have loot drop corrupted, but once it drops for you corrupted, it can have any one of these numerous different effects some of which you're likely to be seeking out for increases in damage, and others of which you're likely to be less of a fan of. The other important aspect of the corruption system is the downside that for the first time comes when a piece of loot upgrades. The downside is the actual corruption on the gear. This corruption value will impose combat penalties upon your character. From 1 corruption to 19 corruption, your abilities will have a chance to proc a slow on you. That slow can cause you to move slower in combat and potentially cause your death if it prevents you from, for example, leaving a void zone sufficiently fast to avoid dying to it. If you go over 19 corruption, from 20 to 39 corruption, then your abilities have a chance to proc a void zone below you that will do damage to you. The size of the void zone and how much damage it does depends on how much corruption you have. If you go over 39 corruption and have between 40 and 59, then you can also have the penalty of a thing from beyond chasing you. If it catches you, it'll do damage. If you go over 59 corruption from gear and have between 60 and 79, you have a cascading disaster where getting hit by the thing from beyond instantly procs the slow on you and a void zone under you, such that you're now being meleeed, slowed to get, make it harder to get away from the melee, and having a void zone ticking damage on you. If you exceed 80 corruption, you have all of those additional effects from before, and you also gain a debuff that simply increases how much damage you take 
and reduces how much healing you get, just making you more likely to die. The stacking and cascading nature of these negative effects from increasing amounts of corruption effectively imposes a cap on how much corrupted gear you're going to want to wear. That cap will vary depending on how difficult the content you're doing is and how likely that content is to kill you on its own without the addition of slows, void zones, giant monsters chasing you, and a simple kill me debuff increasing your damage taken. It may be that you're very comfortable with these effects and debuffs, and you're okay having something like 40 or 45 corruption, having slow spawn under you, void zone spawn below you, and a thing from beyond chasing you. But it may be that you're dealing with content where having one or more of these effects could cause you to die, and you want to choose to avoid the corruption being on your gear. Different people doing different levels of content will have different comfort levels with different levels of corruption. What's inevitable, though, is that if you want to gain the benefits of having the corrupted procs on your gear, you're also going to have to deal with the detriments. Now, it's important to talk about the tiers of corruptive effects. When a piece of gear drops for you and it procs corruption, it can proc either tier one, tier two, or tier three. At the lowest tier of corruption proc, it gives you the smallest benefit and the smallest amount of corruption. And then at increased tiers, Higher procs of corruption give you a better effect and a larger penalty. Taking, for example, one of the most popular effects that corrupted gear can have, increased damage with critical strikes. A piece of corrupted gear drops for you and it procs the effect you wanted. Your critical strikes now do more damage. That piece, however, can drop in either tier one, tier two, or tier three. If it drops at tier one, if the piece will increase the damage you deal with critical strikes by 2%. At tier two, It'll give you 3% additional critical strike damage, and at tier 3, it gives you 4% increased critical strike damage. The difference between tier 1 and tier 3 is pretty significant. Double the amount of increased your critical strike damage. But each additional level of corrupted positive effect comes with additional corruption to impact you as well. A tier 1 piece will only give you 10 corruption, while a tier 2 piece will give you 17, and a tier 3 will give you 25. So if you only have one piece of corrupted gear dropped from you in your first clear of the heroic new raid, it could be a tier one or tier two piece that only gives you the first and least impactful negative effect, a randomly procced slow on your character. But if you get the very best corruption effect of 4% increased critical strike damage, you would also get the 25 corruption that comes with it. And with that single piece, accrue both the slow that you gain from having one to 19 corruption and the void zone below your character that you gain from having 20 to 39 corruption. If you're fortunate enough to get another piece of loot that also has a corrupted effect, that will add on top of your previous corruption, giving you both effects that are positive and the total amount of corruption with its proportional impact upon your gameplay. There's one more important kind of corruption gear to talk about, and that is the corrupted weapons that can drop from the Nile Author Raid. There are a number of corrupted weapons that drop from bosses in Nihilatha. Unlike other gear that can drop and proc corruption with varying effects and varying levels of corruption, these weapons drop with a guaranteed effect and a guaranteed amount of corruption. Those effects are unique and powerful. For example, a particularly noteworthy weapon is the weapon that drops for Blood Death Knights. That weapon increases the Blood Death Knight's armor and explodes dealing damage to every target around that death knight every 30 seconds. That's an extremely powerful increase in damage for the death knights doing any kind of encounter with adds or, for example, mythic plus. Other weapons have effects that proc random stat increases or proc a cooldown reduction on some random ability or just simply do damage for free. Importantly, they also come with a guaranteed amount of corruption. Equipping any of these weapons will give you an immediate 25 corruption, which immediately puts you into the tier 2 corruption effect where you'll be procking slows and void zones on your character. Now, earlier I said I wasn't a fan of Titan Forging. I'm a fan of this new system if for no other reason than that it eliminates Titan Forging. Titan Forging was that bad. But I also think it's just an upgrade on its own merit. Let's talk about why. First, it's important to realize this does not eliminate RNG. One of the biggest objections to Titan Forging is that it's so RNG based. Maybe you get a piece of loot that drops from a boss that you wanted and it doesn't proc any Titan Forging and you feel a little bad because your friend gets one that's 10 item levels higher. But the problem is that this system 
if anything, has even more RNG. Because now a piece of loot can drop, and you need to hope that it corrupts. And then if it does corrupt, it's completely RNG whether it corrupts with the effect that you are seeking or an effect you simply don't care about. Given that there are at least 10 effects that can proc on your corrupted gear, there are a number that most people won't care about at all. For example, most damage dealers, not a big fan of additional avoidance, or leech. Probably also won't particularly enjoy corrupted items that drop with health regeneration. They're going to be looking for corruption effects that increase the damage they deal with critical strikes or give them additional secondaries. If the piece drops with corruption and gives you the effect you want, there's one more roll of RNG still, because maybe it drops with the corruption effect you wanted, but at a low tier, giving you only 2% increased critical strike damage instead of the 3 or 4 that you could have gotten with a better roll. So as you can see, there's still an enormous amount of RNG in the system, whether it drops corrupted at all, which corrupted effect it gains, and the degree of its corrupted effect. Given all this RNG, why do I think the system is better? Essentially, merely because this system imposes a cap. Under Titanforging, you want every single piece of loot you get to Titanforge. I want plus 15 item levels on my trinket and my other trinket. Both of my rings, please. Yeah, the boots, the legs, the belt, the gloves, the weapon, the back, the bracers, everything. Because without a downside, you're always chasing additional titan forging and additional item level. Under the new corruption system, every piece of gear that you equip with corruption is going to significantly increase your corruption, bringing with it 10, 17, or 25 additional corruption. Those values stack very quickly into these negative effects that will seriously impact your gameplay. One or two corruption items giving you less than 20 total corruption, only incurring the slow, Maybe not a big deal, but you're not going to want to equip every single slot with corruption in every single slot at tier three in every single slot because you will have so much corruption that the moment you enter combat, you'll be killed. Every player is going to have to balance how much corrupted effect they can gain while incurring the penalty from the corruption value. That's going to impose an effective cap on how much of this you can wear, which also imposes a fairly effective cap on how much of it you pursue. If you get a piece of corrupted gear to drop for you that gives you 4% increased critical strike damage, you're going to be quite happy with that piece and it's going to give you 25 corruption. If you get three more pieces that do it as well, you're going to feel pretty happy, but I doubt you're going to wear them all because you're going to be getting into thresholds where a thing from beyond is going to chase you, do excessive damage, spawn voids below you, and slow you, causing you to potentially die, whether it's in progression, farm, or during Mythic Plus. The mere existence of that cap, in my opinion, is a significant improvement in the loot system in 8.3. You won't feel nearly as bad about not having improvements on all of your gear because you simply can't wear improvements on all of your gear while remaining alive. Importantly, what that basically means is that at some point you're likely to RNG into the corruption effects you want at the value that you're comfortable with and be pretty happy with your gear where it's at instead of constantly pursuing titan forging in every single slot. What do you think? Do you prefer Titan Forging or the new corruption system coming in 8.3? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, subscribe for more videos, and remember to give us feedback by liking or disliking this one. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day.